Hey everybody, my name is Jesse Verga. I am the executive director of KNL Animal Rescue. I wanted to come on here today to talk to you guys about a few things that I don't think get enough attention. Now, for us in the animal world and like the rescue world, we say these things all of the time, but I really wanted to break it down for people who might not understand the concept, adopt, don't shop. So today we're gonna to talk about what this means why we say it, and then I'm going to leave a link in the description to our website that has more of the statistics and the research studies and the backing as to why we say adopt, don't shop. So let's get into it. Adopt, don't shop means exactly that. Adopt your next pet. Do not buy your pet from a breeder. And we've heard every argument in the book, right? We've heard shelter dogs have problems, whether it's behavioral or, you know, or medical. You know, I want a certain type of dog because I need a dog that's a certain size. Or I've always really liked this breed and I can't find it in the shelter. Or, you know, older dogs or I have kids. Like, we've literally heard it all, right? And, you know, there are some people who will say, well, this specific breed does this task very well. And that is great. I'm going to present some counter arguments. Now again, this is just my opinion. This is the opinion of hundreds of thousands. I think it's safe to say millions of people across the world who believe in adopt don't shop. And we have backed it up with science. We've backed it up with numbers of all sorts. The first argument is that shelter pets have behavioral issues. This could very well be the case. Not every shelter dog is professionally trained, but neither is every puppy from a breeder. It's still going to require the same amount of work. The old adage, you know, can't teach a dog new tricks is simply not true. There have been plenty of dogs, dogs that I've personally worked with, that do great. There are trainers everywhere that will tell you, you can teach a dog. If you do it the right way, if you understand the dog, you understand the dog's behavior. I mean, there's a whole field. There's dog behaviorists and animal behaviorists, right? They get advanced degrees in animal psychology to understand animal behavior and then correct and maneuver and pivot and allow that pet to have the quote unquote desirable behavior, right? Maybe not having accidents in the house and not pulling on the leash, right? Those are desirable behaviors that we try to elicit through various practices of training. That is going to be the case, whether you adopt the dog or you buy the dog. So that's the first argument. The second argument is the argument of medical issues. And sure, maybe on the surface, you can see that this shelter pet has a, you know, immediate medical issues or has a history of medical issues. But then I ask you this, one of the problems that we are seeing in dogs that are bred is a lack of genetic diversity. And with that comes a ton of problems, immunodeficiencies, increased risks of cancer, right? There are a lot of issues that come with a dog being bred. So even though you might not see it because they're a puppy, as the dog gets older and as the dog develops, they are more likely to have a lot of these medical issues. Will all dogs from breeders have medical issues? No. But the same can be said about shelter dogs. Not every shelter dog has medical issues. Also, not every shelter dog is an older dog. There are lots of puppies at the shelter. That brings me to my next point. There are purebred dogs at the shelter. There are dogs that are 80%, you know, Australian Shepherd or 80% Pointer at the shelter. And a lot of those dogs were bred. They're the mothers of the litters of puppies that were sold. And a lot of these parent dogs were just tossed aside. And they're phenomenal dogs. They have great demeanors. They don't have a ton of behavioral issues. They don't have a ton of medical issues, right? And even if they do, does that mean they don't deserve a home? And the last argument I wanted to address is the purpose-driven breeding. You know, I want a dog that's 100% Bel Belgian Malinois, or I want a dog that's 100% German Shepherd. That makes me wonder, does that 100% German Shepherd do a better job than the 80% German Shepherd? 
Does that 20% really make a difference in their output or in that desirable behavior that you're trying to elicit through whatever specified training? I'd argue no. There are a lot of dogs that were bred specifically for certain jobs that have a variety of other maybe older breeds in them. So if a dog is half Australian Shepherd, half Pointer, and a hundred years later, that purebred is then bred with a Pointer, does that make it less purebred if its ancestral lineage comes from that same exact breed? And with that, that brings me full circle to the adopt don't shop movement. All of the reasons that people shop can be answered with an amazing dog from the shelter or from a rescue. Right now we're seeing overcrowding in our shelters. How could that be? If all of the dogs that are leaving rescues and that are leaving shelters, if a majority of them are fixed, where are these dogs coming from? And the answer is breeders. The answer is irresponsible owners. But regardless of how they got there, we still have shelters filled with dogs. And the reality of the situation is these places operate as businesses. And us rescues try our hardest to go save these dogs from these businesses, from these county animal shelters, and from the pound, and from wherever else they might be. But we are also limited. We are all donation-based. Some of us are fortunate enough to get grants but not all of us. k Animal Rescue is fairly new. Unfortunately, we are still raising funds. We are still unable to intake animals because there is a lot that goes into that, but that doesn't mean you can't support your local shelter. And that is our current crisis. These overcrowded shelters are forced to euthanize and kill perfectly amazing dogs with no serious behavioral issues, with no life-threatening medical issues simply because they just don't have room. So what is our solution? Our solution is to send those amazing dogs and cats to good homes. But if the individuals who are seeking to find their next, you know, furry family member are only looking at breeders, then the breeders get a sale and that pet in the shelter gets killed simply because you chose, or the person who wants to buy their pet chose, to purchase rather than rescue a perfectly fine animal. And that is the decision that we are left with, is how do we allow breeders to continue? And how do we allow bred pets to be an option for people when so many pets are being killed at shelters? And shelters only have so much room. We can't, you know, shelters and rescues only have so much room. We only have so much funding. We can't build a 10-story building to house all of these dogs because that's a prison. That's what's the quality of life. The goal is to get these pets into loving homes. But if loving homes are buying dogs, how do we compete with that? And that is the point of the Adopt Don't Shop movement. We are hoping that you can see what we see every single day, which is amazing, beautiful cats and dogs that are sitting at a shelter waiting for their forever home. I hope I was able to shed some light on the adopt don't shop movement. I know that there's some other arguments are things like, well, if you buy from an ethical breeder. And I, the reason why I didn't address those, those topics is because is there such thing as an ethical breeder if breeding and selling pets ultimately results in the death of another pet? With that, I thank you guys. And I hope that if you can't adopt your next pet, that you at least support your local shelter.